and, and Lucy and Grace, uh, welcome you guys. And um, let me say that the, the title of this message tonight is, is uh, Building on a Sure Foundation. And I love to talk about building uh, because Brother Fred and I are builders. And my dad in the natural realm, my dad, he's 95, was a, a master carpenter uh, for over 40 years. And I'm used to seeing, you know, uh, eating supper and then clearing the dishes. And he would put the blueprints of a, of a house he was working on or a building he was working in. And, and he would um, show me different things on the blueprint. And then he would even take me with him to uh, inspect work uh, that was being done on different projects. And, and I just, um, I love to see houses going up and buildings going up and, and uh, the workers on the roof. Uh, and so um, it's very important that any type of building have a firm foundation. Otherwise, it is not a, a, a sturdy building. And so the foundation is very important. And, uh, and so that's what Brother Fred is going to uh, talk to us about tonight. And so I'm going to turn it over to him. Okay, we're going to talk about the foundation, as Sherry said. And, and this comes from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. And I'm going to ask Sherry to uh, read these verses. I believe this is the New American Standard. <coughs> New American Standard. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Verse two, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, of eternal judgment. Verse three, and this we will do if God permits. Okay, this is a very interesting and a very important concept of the foundation that we have to build. There are two really important things I want to say is that we have to build a foundation. We There has to be a foundation in your life. And the foundation is just the beginning. It, it's not the final house. And, and mm -hmm. you are being built into a house. And Yes, uh, a Jew talks about building yourself up on your most holy faith. faith. And so uh, what, what we're seeing here in this passage is you have to have a foundation in your life. And if the foundation is not uh, lined up with the Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone and with the word of God, then you're, you're not permitted to go on to build the house. Otherwise, it would, it would fall. Uh, certainly in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus talks about building the house. What, how are you going to build the house? It has to be on the solid rock and on the sound foundation, uh, but it's not to end there. The foundation is something that we don't see. It's, mm -hmm. it's something underground, and the house is built on top of it, and we look at the house and how wonderful the house looks and think about your lives and how you're building them up. Uh, and that's all important. So you have to have that foundation. So the foundation has to be there, but that's not the end of the story. You have to go beyond the foundation. And, and so, uh, but the third verse here makes a very interesting point. It says, if God permits. So if you're building a house, uh, your city will have a permit system and they'll come out and mm -hmm. inspect your uh, foundation, see whether or not you can build on it. And then as you begin to build, they will continue uh, and issuing permits that you can continue. And you, if you don't have the firm foundation, you don't get the permit to build the house. Yeah. Uh, and so God has his own permit system, uh, just like your city has a permit system. And so God is going to be looking at the foundation that you're building. And so I want to go over these. Some of them we'll just go over uh, quickly. The first one is repentance. Mm -hmm. And so we have, to, uh, we have to know about repentance. And what is repentance? Well, there are two different concepts of repentance. And one is the New Testament. 
and that talks about a change in the mind, change uh, your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, Hebrew uh, from the Old Testament talks about making a turnaround. Yes, I and, and so some people change their thinking a little bit and, and they make a turnaround a little bit, but you have to turn completely in order to see the kingdom. So you have to totally turn around. It's not just a matter of, well, I'm going to turn away from the evil that I've done, from the things that I've done. Um, I'm going to turn a little bit away from them. But but that's not what this concept of it is about. When you look at it in the Greek and the Hebrew, you've got to change your thinking and turn completely from the way you've been going uh, towards the kingdom, to turn toward the kingdom of God. And it says... Turn from uh, dead works, repentance from dead works. Now, what's dead? dead well, works. we really begin to see this in uh, in Genesis uh, chapter uh, two seventeen, I believe, where God spoke to Abraham. I mean, to Adam and Eve, and said, "Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, or on that day you will die." Okay, so they ate from it but they continued to exist. Uh, so they didn't, their bodies didn't fall down dead as we would think. So what he, he was talking about something different than the body falling down. And uh, God has life in him. The life is in, in God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And in him was life, life. and the life was the light of men, okay? but then to be separated from the life of God that is death. That's what he calls death. That's what he calls darkness. And even though uh, Adam and Eve had continued to walk around beyond the day they ate the fruit, they were cut off from uh, the, the of very life of God, the presence of God. And so that's what it, that's what it means in this case, repentance from dead works. And uh, this is repentance uh is not emotional it's not about emotions mm -hmm. it's about a decision you have to make a decision see a lot of times people fall on their knees and they cry and they and uh, then they uh, say they repent and they get up and they go back and do the same thing what was that out of well, well their repentance was out of emotions and this is not about emotions this is making a, a rational decision uh to change, to change your thinking and mm -hmm. to change the direction you're going, not just a small adjustment and away from one little bitty thing, but it's a total uh, change in direction from the way you've been going towards uh, uh, natural carnal things and turn around completely towards God and uh, the kingdom of God. So that's number one, resurrection, resurrection, from, uh, I mean, uh, repentance from dead works, repentance from dead works. Now, number two is about faith. And so I want to, we, we've got to know that these are the six foundational stones and they all have to line up with the word of God and they have to line up with the chief cornerstone. Mm, mm. In other words, they come from the word of God. And, and so what I consider this particular uh, section is the difference between faith and works, faith and works. See, we cannot earn our salvation by what we do. Hmm. We cannot do that. Uh, and yet there are both of these concepts are important, but under the law is about works. And there are rules and regulations and different denominations have different hmm. rules and regulations, do this and don't do that. But that's not how salvation comes. Salvation is a free gift that comes through grace. Now, once you have, and so don't get confused and think, oh, I've got to do these things and I, I can't smoke and I can't drink and I can't cuss and I can't do those things. Now, that's not salvation. Salvation comes, and we see this in uh, Romans 10, 9, and 10, that, uh, uh, mm -hmm. that if we believe in our heart and confess with our, our mouth, mouth. Uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that and, and He becomes our Lord, He becomes our Savior. Okay, and so that's where salvation comes from. It's believing, and and uh, salvation then comes through faith, and 
And faith and, and believing are basically the same concepts, that you believe in your heart. And where does the faith reside? It resides in your mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. But it has to be activated, and you have to speak it out, confess it with your mouth. Okay, so uh, it's the same thing about repentance, that, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us. Now, you don't necessarily have to confess your sins uh, to the world, you can, but you have to confess your sins to God. You know, some people say, well, I'm just going to repent. I'm going to change. Uh, but, but they don't really confess anything. And they don't, uh, you know, it's like the rich young ruler. He, he didn't come to the conclusion that he needed a savior. And that's why the law was given. So we would recognize and sin and realize that we, we, need, a savior. we need a savior. Uh, and, that, and the way that you get that savior is by believing in that. So that's faith. But it's not works. It's by faith. It's not by keeping the law. It's not by keeping rules and regulations. Or how many meetings you go to or how many times you do devotion or it's, it's not by works. It's by grace. Okay. But now if you have salvation, if you've been saved, you will do things. There's things you will do. Uh, James said, faith without works is dead. Well, we'll get there to death again. Uh, and that's that's not uh, pleasing to, to God because faith without works is dead and faith pleases God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And, and then back to, to repentance from dead works, what are the dead works? So they're not by faith. They're separated from God. They're separated mm -hmm. from the life of God. So dead works are those things that are not by faith. And so now we move to number two. This is faith. And there are works that go with faith, but it's works by faith. And so this is not about uh, me earning my salvation, but it's simply doing what, I, uh, what I'm confessing, that I'm saying I'm a Christian. These are the kinds of things I will do. I will love my neighbor. I will love my uh, like enemies. <laughs> my enemies. I will pray for them. Okay, so those are those begin to be works that correspond with your faith. Uh, I like what uh, Oral Roberts said back in the 1950s. He, he was having healing uh, crusades, and he would go up to people who were completely paralyzed. They were laying on cots or laying in iron lungs, mm -hmm. and they couldn't move anything. And, and he said, do something. If you believe that God is healing, you do something. It's some kind of a corresponding action. action. And some of them, all they could do was just blink their eyes. And that was enough. There was an action that went along with their believing. So it wasn't just uh, laying there, but they would try to do things uh, and what they could do, like blink their eyes, and God would respond to that and heal them. So it, it it you have to have works to go along with what you're professing, what you're confessing. But but you cannot be saved uh, by the works and the things that you do and the laws that you keep. It's by faith. Salvation comes by faith. So those are the first two stones uh, and they're closely related that's the reason i went back and forth between them it's the repentance of dead works and dead works is without faith and the second one is about faith and so i wanted to talk about faith and uh, works mm -hmm. hallelujah now there is the doctrine of baptisms and so i want to talk about mm -hmm. the baptisms and then the New Testament talks about three different baptisms. And the first one was John the Baptist, and he was called the Baptist mm -hmm. because he baptized. Yeah. And, and so his was a baptism of repentance. Oh, that's mm -hmm. what we've just been talking about. Hallelujah. It was, a, it was a baptism of repentance, and he baptized them in water. But he said, you bring forth the fruit, fruit of, repentance. of repentance. So if you've repented, there should be some fruit. fruit. Now, what is the fruit? Well, you're going to do something different. You've been going down one path, and now you're going to change your way of thinking. You're going to begin thinking of the thoughts that, that God thinks, and you're 
turn around so that you're facing the kingdom and moving towards the kingdom. And he said, you come with fruit of repentance. And so all three of these first uh, uh, foundational elements, they're all interrelated. And, mm. and so this is the fruit of repentance is you, you change the way you live, mm. the change. And, and it's not just uh, inward, but there has to be some expression of the change that you've made from repentance. Okay, that was John the Baptist, and he, was, he had a baptism of repentance. But when Jesus came and, and uh, he had the resurrection, he had his uh, crucifixion, and death, uh, burial, and resurrection, then things changed. And then Acts 19, uh, we, we encounter the baptism of John again, and it turns out that some men had been baptized into the baptism of John, which was the baptism of repentance, basically changing what they were doing. Uh, and But that wasn't sufficient. They had to be baptized uh, when the baptism of Jesus and, and going into the water, uh, that's a representation of, the, of death and then coming out of it is coming up into new life. And so that's a different baptism. There's a baptism of John of repentance, but then the second one in the New Testament is a baptism into, uh, into the water. And then there is a baptism into the Holy Spirit. Woo, sorry. sorry. So we're baptized uh, in the Holy Spirit uh, into the body of Christ. And so the three baptisms, and that's the reason that the word baptism was plural mm -hmm. here in this passage that Sherry read about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the doctrine of baptisms. And we don't do the uh of baptism of John anymore, even though it was in the New Testament, because it was a transition. See, John was in transition from the yeah, Old the Testament runner. and into the New uh, Testament, and, and he was uh, preparing the way for Jesus. And so, so we see there in Acts 19 <clears throat> that the baptism of John uh, into repentance is not sufficient. We need the baptism of water and that wash that symbolizes our death, death. and burial, and, and then the resurrection into the new life, and that's the new life. And mm -hmm. so we are, are baptized uh, into death, burial, and resurrection in the new life, and then we come and live in the newness of life, okay? But then the third baptism is about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, what are, what is really baptism? It's about being immersed. Mm -hmm. Immersed. Uh, John the Baptist immersed them in water, put them all the way under the water. Baptism of water in, in the New Testament. That's uh, that's all the way immersed in the water. And then the baptism of the Holy Spirit is immersed in the, in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Mm -hmm. into something. So it's in the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and into the body of Christ. So Holy when you're Spirit. baptized, baptized, immersed in the Holy Spirit, then you are baptized into the body of Christ. So it's not just mm, mm, the mm, mm. it's not just about the substance you're baptized in, but it's you're also baptized into something. So the That's first good. one, uh, John, uh, see John the Baptist, his baptism was in water into forgiveness of yeah, sins. Yes. And then we have the baptism and, and that we're immersed in the water into newness of life. Yes, yes. So we're going to the death and burial and raised into the newness of life. And then Hallelujah. in the Holy Spirit, the baptism is in the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. So that's the mm, that's the first mm, uh, mm, mm, mm. verse three. That's, Hallelujah! That's good. Hallelujah! It's very good. It's very Hallelujah. good. Freddie. Very good. Now, now we've got uh, repentance, faith, baptisms, baptisms, and then 
So laying on hands. hands. Laying on of hands. hands. Now, I, I want to ask you a question, but you don't have to answer, answer it to me. Uh, but you might want to answer it to God, and that is, have you had anybody lay hands on you for some reason? Okay, so here, there are a lot of reasons why uh, laying on of hands is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, where does it start? Well, we see it in the beginning, in the book of beginnings, in uh, Genesis, Genesis, because uh, we see them laying on the hands of their descendants and blessing them. Okay, so why uh, why is there this doctrine and why is it so important? Because it's a transitional uh, element. It, it's going from one generation to another oh, generation. Wow. It's going from one person to another person. It's going from uh, uh, one generation to another generation. And it's, it's about continuity. See, if we don't have laying on of hands, there's no continuity. But if you have the laying on of hands, there's some continuity because there's one person in one generation uh, that's laying on hands and he's imparting something to you or she's imparting something to you. And then you do that to your children, your spiritual children, you do that. And there's a continuity and a, and a going uh, succession from um, generations from one generation to the next generation. So laying on of hands is very important. Now, what is actually imparted when there's a laying on of hands in the Bible? Blessings. Yes. I uh, remember the the mm -hmm. um, the patriarchs blessed uh, their children mm -hmm. and grandchildren, and and so blessings. That's the one thing that comes from laying on of hands. Uh, what else? Well, you know Moses laid hands on Joshua. Uh, because Joshua is going to replace him. And what did he impart to him? He imparted the spirit of wisdom to him. Okay, so you can have uh, blessings, you can have wisdom, you can have authority passed on, uh, you can have uh, power, you can have the Holy Spirit. See, uh, you have healing. You look at. Um, you look at Peter and John, they came down where there was a great revival going on in Samaria and into this city. And uh, nobody, and there was a great revival, miracles, all kinds of things were happening. I'm talking about Acts 8. Mm. And, uh, but nobody had received the baptism of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So the apostles laid hands on them and they all received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So laying on of hands, you can get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, also the gifts. You, uh, people uh, lay hands on on people and they receive the gifts. Uh, remember, Paul said in 2 Timothy 1.6, mm. kindle the fire within you and stir up the gift that was uh, given to you by, the laying, by laying, on the laying on of hands. So laying on of hands is very important. And as Sherry referred to Mark 16, that says believers will lay hands, hands on, the sick. on the sick and they shall recover and you'll see them recover glory to god Hallelujah. laying on of hands is very important well you might say oh but my uh doctrine and my denomination they don't believe in laying on hands well see what you miss you miss blessings you miss authority you miss uh the holy spirit the gifts of the spirit and you get and you miss ministry and so some of them just mm -hmm. restrict it to ministry uh but it's all of these things and wisdom, yeah, all good, of these things um, by laying on of hands. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important doctrine. Mm -hmm. This is one of the foundational Don't doctrines stones. of the body of Christ. And, and see, we're not going to be permitted. Woo, do you see this? Mm -hmm. We're not going to be permitted to build the house if we don't have the foundation right. And so this is, this is very, uh, very important. That, that we need uh, laying on of hands. And you need to be around people who lay hands on, on you uh, and, and impart these things to you. Don't you want to be blessed? Don't you want to be uh, all that God has for you? Don't you want it all? Uh, Wisdom. You get it from the laying on of hands of people uh, that God designates uh, for that reason. Now, when when we think about uh, ministry, it, it recognizes it recognizes 
what God has is doing in a person's life that he's called somebody mm. let's say to ministry okay you lay hands on them now we don't vote on ministers who well who do I want to be an elder in my in my congregation well we're all going to vote on it no that's not what laying on of hands is laying on of hands is saying this is the person God has chosen. Hallelujah. He's approved by God. This is recognition that God has chosen this person, and we're going to lay hands on them uh, because God has appointed them. It's not because, well, uh, who, who do I want to be deacon in, in my congregation? No, it's not about that. Who has God appointed Morning. to be deacon in your in your denomination or in your congregation? Who has God appointed to be minister uh, ar around you? Who has God appointed? So it's not about your choice. Laying on of hands is not about your choice. It's about God's choice. Mm -hmm. And this is acknowledging and recognizing God's choice. You need to be, here's the foundational stone. Oh, wow. You need to be with people who recognize the foundation and recognize these uh, foundational yeah. stones yeah. and they lay hands on people and somebody needs to lay yeah. hands on you yeah. and you need people with fire in their Hallelujah. belly Hallelujah. that are going to yeah. lay hands on you and impart things to you, impart the gifts of the spirit to you, yes. impart the Holy Spirit to you, impart wisdom. You need people around you who will uh, stand up and lay hands on you and say, this is a person that God has appointed. Yes, I recognize the potential in this person. Hallelujah. 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 This is a this is a foundational stone. Now let's move on to number five. And this is about the resurrection. Mm -hmm. About the resurrection. So let's think about a resurrection here for a moment. Let's think about what happens, what happens uh, when we lay down this body? <clears throat> a good place to begin to understand this is Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, this is not a parable. Jesus said uh, there was a rich man and there was a beggar. And the beggar's name was Lazarus. And, and they both died. And the angels uh, carried uh, one of them one place and one to the other. And there were two places. And, and, and uh, the, the rich man lifted up his eyes and he saw Lazarus and the rich man knew that he was being tormented and he asked Abraham because Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom and so he asked uh, Abraham if he would send Lazarus down there just to dip his uh, finger in the water and go down there and put it on his tongue okay so there's several important concepts here about death and one is that they still had the same personalities. They still had the same identities. They did not lose their identity because they had passed on oh, into the wow, next realm. Wow, wow. There was also a separation between the righteous and the unrighteous. Oh, I mean. and, and there was a recognition of who was being caught tormented and who was being comforted and, mm. and they could see that and they could they could remember the things in the past and, and they and they could recognize people that he recognized uh abraham and he recognized lazarus the rich man did and and, and so they re had remembrances of the past of what had happened in the life so it's not like your spirit, your your soul just goes someplace and has no a, no uh, understanding of where it is. No, you're gonna know where you are in eternity. You're gonna know. Oh, you're gonna be. You, you're gonna know the difference between mm. where the righteous are and where the uh, unrighteous are. You're gonna know these things. You're gonna. Your personality is not gonna change uh, uh, just because. You, you've passed on. Your identity is not going to change. You know, the Bible says that a tree falls, so will it be resurrected. resurrected. And, and so you're, and you're resurrected. Uh, you're going to come up. Now, what does the resurrection mean? It means you stand up out of the death and out of the grave. Oh, now, let's think about Jesus for a moment because we see him as being resurrected. Mm -hmm. Now on the cross, he said, I commit my spirit Hallelujah, to the Father. Father. And then in Acts chapter two, it says his soul uh, went to the realm of the 
uh, dead and uh, uh, went uh, went to the realm of the unseen into Hades. Uh, uh, and, and his body went there where it was from John 19. They laid it in a tomb. So he had a spirit, a soul, and a body. And they all uh, went to different places. But on the day of resurrection, they all came together. together. The spirit, soul, Woo! and body. So you'll be resurrected, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, glory to God. Now, here's another thing. Mm. Here's another mm. thing that that was before the resurrection of Jesus that Jesus was talking mm. about from the beggar and Lazarus. Uh, but when he paid the price, when Jesus paid the price on, on the cross, there's no longer that Abraham's bosom where people go down there temporarily because what Jesus did, he, he went down to that realm of the of the dead to the realm of the unseen, uh, Hades, and and he proclaimed who he was, mm -hmm. and, and those people that believed him followed him, and, and they all came up on the day of resur of the resurrection Sunday. He and led captivity captive. It says in Ephesians four, he led captivity captive. In other words, he brought them out in a great procession, a great victorious procession. He took them up to heaven, and now you don't go down to Abraham's bosom, but you still have your personality. You still have your identity. You still have the remembrance of, uh, of this time on the earth, and you recognize people, and you recognize your family, and you recognize your friends, and you recognize all of these people. You, you don't go just in some limbo, and, and Paul said to be absent from the body is to be, be present, present with, with the, the Lord, Lord. and uh, Stephen said, uh, before they stoned him, he saw Jesus the standing, standing to receive him. And, and he said, I, I forgive all of these people, Father, because they don't know what to do. Uh, uh, they're uh, doing uh, what they're doing. What they're doing. Uh, and that's, even Saul uh, of Tarsus didn't know what he was doing, but but Stephen, see, released him right there from his sin so that he could be Paul to write the New Testament, write several chapters in the New Testament because Stephen released him from his sins uh, right there yeah. before the, as they were stoning him. And then the Lord received him Whew. in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The body lays Whew. down. Hallelujah. He lays down. Oh, it's on the red day of resurrection, but it's going to rise up and it's going to come the Hallelujah. spirit and soul of God. They're going to all be united. Hallelujah. This is a this is a foundational stone. This is a foundational stone about resurrection and how it and how it happens. And, and we don't go the same place uh, Lazarus went uh, and, and the uh, the beggar Lazarus went uh, because because that that area has been empty. Because Jesus Christ emptied it, took all of those who were righteous into heaven. So you look for Abraham today, he's in heaven. You look for Samuel. Lazarus, <laughs> Samuel today, he's in heaven. You look for Lazarus today, you look for Stephen today, you look for or Paul, David. Peter, John, David, they're all in heaven. So don't think they're down some down there and we've got to pray them out of some place. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Now, now, there is a sixth foundational Woo! stone, and that's judgment. And there are two kinds of judgment in the Bible. One's judgment in history, and the other is eternal judgment. So let me talk to you about judgment in history first. And, and that is uh, what you do is going to impact your generations, successive generations. Mm -hmm. They'll either be blessed mm -hmm. because of what you do, or they'll be uh, they'll suffer because of what you do. That's a that is a judgment in history, because uh, uh, God said uh, for, for three or four generations the the iniquities of the fathers will be visited on their children and their children's children, uh, three and four generations. But the righteous will be blessed for a thousand generations, a, a thousand generations. And so you stand up in righteousness. And a thousand generations after you will be blessed because of you. That's that's judgment in history. But there's also a judgment uh, in eternity, an eternal judgment. You know, an angel stood up, I believe it was Revelation 10 one time, and said, time is no more. Time mm -hmm. has ended. And that's a, it's all over with. And that's 
but there's a judgment after that time, oh, after Christ. time. And so, see, Christians are thinking all about today and what can I get today? And uh, what about today? And what about me today? And not any eternity, but you see, there are six foundational uh, stones here and two of them relate to eternity. One of them relates is a resurrection and the other is eternal uh, eternal judgment. judgment. So there are six uh, of these stones. Two of them relate beyond time. They go beyond time. Mm, and so mm, we, we need to recognize that, hey, we need to think uh, about yeah. what's going to happen after, after, after time. There is, a, there is a judgment. There is a judgment that we have to face. But praise God, we're not going to be judged with the wicked. We're going to stand before, before Jesus, Jesus Christ. And, and we're going to be judged at his judgment throne, yes. the throne of judgment, not, not at the throne where, oh, not where the wicked, I don't want to stand with the wicked on the day of judgment. We'll be, we'll be in another place. We'll be judged by Christ uh, at, at his, uh, the throne of Christ. And that's where we want to be. There is an eternal judgment. Let me tell you, what, you've got to make a decision today because it's going to impact. It's going to impact where you spend eternity. And let me tell you, there, there are not three alternatives. There are only two alternatives, either the righteous or the wicked. Only the righteous or the wicked. There's not something in between. There's not something, oh, uh, 90, I, got it, I got it right 99% of the time. No, you've got to, you've got to have it right. You, you, the righteous are the righteous. And then they're not 99% righteous. They are the righteous. And they're going to stand and spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You, amen. We've amen. got to understand these foundational stones and build on them and have our life built on them in order for God to permit us to build the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.